Enough talk about depth buffering. Let's actually turn it on and see it in action. But before I do so, let me build the program, run it, and look at what we have right here. We have blue on top of red. The reason why blue is on top of red is because we rendered the blue triangle after rendering the red triangle. And all the fragments that the blue triangle put out became pixels because there's no other tests for those fragments to go through. They just automatically become pixels. We've talked about that in previous videos. Let me open the Windows snipping tool and just grab this for later reference for us. I'm going to come into our code and enable the depth buffer. The depth buffer again is turned off by default because checking every fragment against the depth buffer takes time and if we don't need the depth buffer then we certainly don't want to pay for the expense of it. Uh, but if we do want it, which 99,000% of the time I do, then I need to enable it explicitly. We can enable it anywhere we want, and we can also disable it. We can enable it, disable it all we want to. Right here in Initialize GL, I say this is a good place to say, hey, while you're at it, enable the depth test. All right, and then every time we paint, we need to clear the entire buffer to the furthest most value that OpenGL or we are interested in, which is one. Okay, we've seen the depth buffer goes from one way out to negative one way in close to the camera. So let's go down here to paint and say, GL, please clear the depth buffer. Depth buffer bit. Now, remember, we had this before, right? Blue on top of red. When I run this program, is anything going to change? And if something changes, why? If something doesn't change, why? Think about that, pause the video, and come back, and I'll go through all that. I said pause the video, you didn't pause the video. It would be really good for you to pause the video and think through if anything's going to change. Okay, let me squish this down. I guess that's the best I can do. And let's just pick on one little fragment in here. I'm going to pick on the fragment right here. There's a few in there, I know, but we'll pretend it's one. One fragment here, the blue triangle and the red triangle both cover that fragment. Remember, we render the red triangle first. And let's say, let's, let's do our buffers. I'm going to, remember, a buffer is just a two-dimensional array. So we'll call this our color buffer. This is a two-dimensional array. It just has one element in it, one frag. Let's just examine one frag in here, or one pixel. This will be our color buffer. And here is our depth buffer, the corresponding cell inside of the depth buffer for this pixel. Now, when we say clear the depth buffer, this value gets set to 1. And then, eventually, we say render out the red triangle. And if you recall, the red triangle has a vertex up here, has one down here, and one down here. And in the shader, the vertex shader, I have it back here in the background, you can kind of see, but we say the position for every vertice, this goes for the blue and the red, but right now we're just considering the red, the position for every vertice, its Z position, is 0. So the fragment shader for the red triangle, it kicks out a red fragment and says, turn it all on. Okay, make it all red. In fact, let's do this how we did in the previous video. All red, no green, and uh, no blue. I almost said all blue. And the hardware also tracks the depth value. Well, it turns out if you have three vertices that are zero, interpolate, interpolating the Z position for all three of those vertices will also kick out a zero. So we have a potential fragment here, and we have a depth value. And the hardware says, okay, is zero less than one, meaning is this fragment closer to the camera than what I had there before? Well, you didn't really have anything there before. We just set it to one because we haven't drawn anything to this fragment. Zero is less than one, so the hardware says, okay, then I shall update this one to a zero, because zero is the closest thing to the viewer, and this fragment becomes a pixel. We shall copy that fragment data into the color buffer, like so. And, and then we're done. We've considered that fragment. It's done its work. And I now have an arrow stuck in my box. Let me see if I can pinch in here a little bit. And, uh, that's probably the best I'm going to get. Okay, then we render the blue triangle. Well, the results for the blue triangle are similar to the red triangle, except we have a blue fragment instead of a red fragment. So let's do no red, no green, and all blue. 
And the depth value for this fragment right here on the on the blue triangle, well, it just so happens to turn out that all the vertices, again, are at the exact same z value as the red triangle. So the depth value for that fragment will be 0. And OpenGL says, OK, I've got 0. Is that closer to the viewer than what I had before? More specifically, is it less than? All right, well, if I take this 0 and I move it down here and, and say, is the new value less than the old value? No, 0 is not less than 0. So then this fragment is rejected, and the red triangle wins. It's still in the color buffer. All right, let's actually prove that works. We've enabled the depth test. Let's run this, Control F5. And there you go, the red triangle. It's on the exact same plane as the blue triangle. And so in that case, first guy in wins, which is the red triangle. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's actually go in here and modify or give these, these vertices actual Z values. I'm going to go up to our data, send data to OpenGL. And right here I'm going to say const float red triangle Z. Let's put the red triangle in front of the blue triangle, make it boss. So in order for the red triangle to be closer to the camera, we'll say it's negative 0.5 in the Z, and then const float blue triangle Z. And we'll set him out behind the red triangle like so. Okay, now I'm going to copy this, paste that right there, put a comma, put a space right here, highlight, copy, paste, paste. And same thing with the blue triangle. You say blue here, blue. Oops, control shift U to uppercase that. Grab all that, control C, control V, control V. And now we've added another element to our position. Remember, our position was two floats. Well, now it's three floats. So we need to update our data descriptions to OpenGL. Let's push this to the right. It's now three floats. And the stride is larger now. Instead of going five floats per vertex, we're going six floats. Look at me changing all these magic numbers. You'd almost think I was a professional. And then, let's see right here, we're starting the data, the color data. It doesn't start out two floats in. It now starts out three floats in. We've covered all that in previous videos. I think we're good there. Let's go to our vertex shader here. And now position, it's going to be three floats. We're sending the Z value in for the red and the blue triangle. And so now that this is a vector three or three floats, I no longer need to supply the Z value here because the Z value will come out of this vec three. I think that's all we need to do. Let's, let's, uh, let's build and run this. And the red triangle should show up on top. It does, it did before. And then let's change this up. Let's put the blue triangle on top instead. All right, we'll move the blue triangle Z, we'll move it forward closer to the camera and we'll push the red triangle back. Control F5 and voila, the blue triangle wins. So hopefully you're getting the idea here of depth and and how we can enable the depth buffer, how we use the depth buffer. In the next video I'm going to show you some cool tricks to kind of really hone in what's going on with the interpolation, how we figure out fragment Z values and that sort of thing.